Hello everybody, welcome to Basking Shark, a video going over all elements of Basking Shark by Norman McCaig, with me, Miss A.B. Let's get going. So the poem first. To stub an oar on a rock where none should be, to have it rise with a slounge out of the sea, is a thing that happened once, too often, to me. But not too often, though enough, I count as gain that once I met on a sea tin-tacked with rain, that room-sized monster with a matchbox brain. He displaced more than water, he shoggled me. Centuries back, this decadent townee shook on a wrong branch of his family tree. Swish up the dirt, and when it settles, a spring is all the clearer. I saw me, in one fling, emerging from the slime of everything. So who's the monster? The thought made me grow pale, for twenty seconds while, sail after sail, the tall fin slid away, and then the tail. Okay, so we're now going to go through the poem bit by bit and look at the key components. So we've got the word stub, which is onomatopoeia. Right, it is a short, sudden sound. vaguely painful because you're associating with, with stubbing a toe so that like shock is shown through this he is sort of in shock when the the oar hits the supposed rock um this shows the solidity of the shark of shark uh where none should be so we've got kind of an inverted syntax here um just to make the rhyme happen um, but it also emphasizes that surprise. To have it rise with a slounge out of the sea. This is an invented word. So it's word choice. It's definitely word choice. It's a bold choice to choose a word that doesn't really exist, but it emphasizes the slow laziness of the shark. There's a thing that happened once too often to me. So here we've got parenthesis being used to um, add humour. But also the um, sort of a dislike of the experience initially. He's not happy about it at this point in the poem. Okay, stanza two. But not too often. So here's a reversal. He's already rethinking that idea of it happening too much. Though enough. Um, but once was enough. So it was still a trauma. He's recognising the trauma. I count as gain. So overall experience was worth it and that's obviously word choice from gain i'm well that once i met so met is a very specific use of word choice here it shows a deeper connection generally when you see an animal you don't say that you met them right you see them i that once i saw on a sea tin tacked with rain would fit exactly the same but he doesn't use the word saw he uses the word met because it's like he's made this deeper connection this almost personal connection with the shark tin tact we've got this sharp t alliteration sharp t alliteration um creates this really visual image that room-sized monster with a matchbox brain. Now, monster here, um, obviously, metaphorically, it's not like actually a, a sort of scary monster. Um, and it's also word choice, showing huge and scary. He is like struck by fear when he first sees it. Matchbox brain, however, metaphor, shows inferior, intellect 
He's kind of shocked and surprised how something this big can be controlled by a brain so small, right? That's the idea here, that there's not this, like, colossal brain to go alongside this colossal size. Monster could also just mean big, right? When we say a monster truck, it's not like a really scary truck it's just huge so think of monster more at this in this poem at this stage as to do with large right he displaced more than water um so here he's hinting to the revelation that he has as a result of this um he shoggled me so here's word choice scots it means shaken He's been sort of shaken out of his comfortable worldview. Um, you know, we use the word shook now. Um, and that that's what's happened to him. Centuries back, this decadent townie word choice. He's spoiled and over-civilised. Shook on the wrong branch of his family tree. So it's important to note that he says wrong branch, right? He's on the wrong branch. So, um, sort of a mistake in evolution. He views himself as the worst choice between him and the shark. Um, of his family tree. Family tree, of course, is a metaphor showing the closeness between all living things. It's fair to say that McCaig feels a closeness to the shark. Do not fall into the trap of saying he is related to the shark because that makes it sound like it's his cousin, which is not the case. And again, is a really common issue that people face. Swish up the dirt and when it settles, a spring is all the clearer. Here he's saying that this experience has shown him something by shaking up his worldview, right? But it's swish shows the ease of the shark creating this revelation. Um, and when it settles, the spring is all the clearer. He has a clearer view of the world. In one, I saw me in one fling. So again, it's this ease of movement that this shark creates. It's the shark doing this. It's the shark producing this, like, very intense reaction. And it's very easy for the shark to do because it's so powerful. Um, emerging from the slime of everything. So everything that is alive on Earth comes from the same place. So again, we get that connection. Okay. So who's the monster? Here we've got our rhetorical question. Rhetorical question. And again, people get into some weird spaces when they're analysing this and start saying that this shows that McCaig hates humanity because humanity has done all the bad things. And it's not quite that intense. He's asking the question, between humans and the shark, really, which one is the one that's scariest? Especially in the middle of the sea. Which one of them is in the wrong place here? At the start of the poem, he says to stubborn ore on a rock where none should be. His initial response to the shark is that it shouldn't be here. Because he has this sort of... Um, human superiority right we he's supposed to be there he's not supposed to suddenly hit his oar on something because he's in the middle of the sea so he is in shock and is like how how dare it be here at this point he's realizing that through the technology that he's using the boat he's in the wrong place not the shark so it's just a re-evaluation of humanity's place We're not that special. We're not better than everything else. Um, and in many, in many respects, it could be us that's monstrous to other things, right? We are monstrous to the course of nature rather than um, the shark being monstrous just because of its size. The thought made me grow pale. So it's this word choice. Pale shows how much of an effect. Um, it's having a strong impact on him because it's, it's changing like physiological features. 
sale after sale we've got repetition emphasizing just how long the shark is it's a long shark um and it keep it creates this like very sort of um peaceful and graceful thing the tall thin slid away thin slid right we've got this um assonance smooth flowing movement the shark went from being this big slounging creature to a tall fin sliding away and then the tail very graceful very long very beautiful so by the end of the poem he's completely different in his view from at the start okay so the plot the speaker was in a boat in the middle of the ocean and uh, in the sea, sorry, and struck something solid with his oar. It's a shark. He is understandably frightened because it is a shock. It is a surprise to him. But then comes to realise that the shark offers no threat. And then he has an epiphany about his own and humanity's place in the world. That we aren't special, that we aren't superior, and that in some ways we might be inferior or a little bit um, sort of unnatural in the way we are. Um, he comes to reevaluate the way he sees the world, and by the end of the poem, the shark goes from being this object of fear to something that he admires and respects. He he almost reevaluates really quickly early on that it was worthwhile, but by the end of it, he shows the shark a lot more um, reverence. Okay, the characters. We have got the speaker of Norman McCaig, and we have got the shark those are the main characters we are not told whether mckay is alone in the boat i would suggest it's unlikely because that seems like an extremely dangerous thing to do um but we don't get any other characters input which gives us this sense of isolation um regardless of what was true at the time um and we've got these two sort of characters we have to refer to the shark as a character because uh the speaker says that he met him uh, the themes, we've got civilization versus nature. Again, the idea that McCaig is unnatural, that by being there in this space that's not really meant for us, that civilization has created this unnatural um, invasion of other creatures' spaces, versus the shark who is incredibly natural in the space and is therefore not monstrous. We've got evolution, this idea of... Um, everything being related and linked and, and all part of the same primordial ooze right we are all from the same place and therefore we should have more respect and a sort of connection to nature and then we've got that realization the epiphany that mckay has um which makes him totally reevaluate everything in the way he approaches nature and himself techniques the main techniques to remember is that this poem rhymes unlike all the others uh, we've got assonance to make that shark just sound really, really smooth. That cat had snack, right? That is a good way to think of it. It doesn't rhyme because the last letter doesn't rhyme, but it has that assonance, that same vowel sound. Um, we've got imagery um, through the sort of metaphors within the poem, the way he describes the shark. And we've got word choice, which is really strong within this poem. The key quotations, if you can only remember four, make it this, these four. Uh, rise with a slounge we've got the word choice slow lazy ungraceful huge it's this it's this sort of unpleasant image that mckay starts off with room-sized monster with a matchbox brain we've got this metaphor it's large and intimidating but unintelligent uh, wrong branch of his family tree this metaphor shows the closeness and the evolution but also his disdain for where humanity's ended up and then, so who's the monster? The absolute keyest of key quotations from Basking Shark. This rhetorical question, questioning his assumptions, showing his revelation, showing his new thinking. So that is the most important one out of all of the quotations from Basking Shark. So I hope this has helped um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.